uh, play of the game from way down. Plus two, silence. The Rainer getting absolutely a team wipe. The living bombs going. Oh my goodness, the ring. Bob says they go gonna find Rainer. Lifefinder keeps Maya up. It was gonna be a close thing. And he like, what? Get out of no! No! Triple stun again. Big flanks coming out from the uh, blaze. It's a death metal though. Death metal into oh, the double my. triple kill. Hello everybody and welcome to the Nexus Ooh. gaming series. It's playoff time, and we're here tonight for Division A. We're going to see the number three seed, Sky 5, against number six, Regen Retro. I got my Regen shirt on, but, you know, hashtag no caster bias. Uh, looking forward to these two teams. I've cast both of them, and uh, really excited to see how they perform against each other uh, as both teams really picking it up at the end of the season there, or continuing on, depending on how they did uh, mid-season. Uh, but let's take a quick look at maps as both of these teams are ready to go. So the map bans here, Sky 5 banned out, uh, let's see, Dragonshire and Sky Temple with Regen Retro banning out Towers of Doom and Cursed Hollow. Our first game is gonna be on Infernal Shrines. So just a quick look at the standings here. So this is not the bracket for the playoffs, but just to show you there where we are. Again, Regen Retro sitting at number six, uh, Sky Five at number three. Now, whoever wins this goes on to play against the winner of Gilly Shark and Wholesome Halfwits, number two and number seven there. All right, let's check in with the, the teams here. You can start when you're ready. Letting them know that we're all set and ready to go whenever they are. So, quarter. Finals. Let's go ahead and update that. And uh, you know we can even we can even put in our our brackets while we're waiting on the teams here. So, sure. How's everybody doing tonight? I know there's a lot of playoff action going on out there tonight uh, with an, actually another Div A game getting put up there just at the. Uh, the, the seventh hour, so to speak, just a, a little bit ago here. <laughs> Had to let him know that I don't have control over starting the game. They got to do it. <laughs> Looks like we're uh, both teams are ready to go, so we should be getting started here any second. There we go. And again, our first game is actually going to be on Infernal Shrines. Alrighty, get my notepad out here so we can keep track of what kind of craziness is about to happen. And uh, if there's one thing that I know about uh, Regen Retro is that Medivh bans seem to happen to them a fair bit. Now, I know I've seen a game where uh, where they did not ban Medivh against Regen Retro, and they, the I don't remember who it was. It might have actually been... Nah, I don't think it was Lion Speed. It was somebody else. Um, but uh, they didn't ban it, and it ended up... I think that was a Tomb of the Spider Queen game. They did take the Medivh and a Garrosh, I believe, and uh, they were defeated. Two, two comfort picks there. So, but we're gonna see the Mouth Ale being banned out first here. And what are we, Infernal Shrines, right? So Infernal Shrines, no double soaking Mouth Ale for this, and gonna get a Johanna ban as well. So first pick going over to the side of Sky 5, and of course, with the playoffs, there's no coin flip, so it's automatic. Whoever the home team is, the higher seed, gets the choice of whether they want first pick or map pick. And so in this case, Sky 5 electing for first pick. And I think, if I remember correctly, I think that's actually 
what we've like what we see in the upper divisions is a lot of them want the first pick and then in the lower divisions um like b and below uh primarily they want map pick so well, we're gonna see a follow-up onto ghoul dan so ghoul dan has that shrine clear also has the horrify so a lot of dot damage being uh taken out of the taken out of play And the last ban of the first phase is going to be Rhaegar. Rhaegar's not a hero that I think sees all that many bans. Why don't we take a look at his stats just real quick here in Div A, because that's kind of a surprising ban. Let's see. Put that up. Rhaegar. What we got? Yeah, very low win rate, low pick rate. Significantly lower ban rate. But Retro believes enough that uh, Allen by default, or believes enough in Allen by default's Rhaegar to ban that out. So we're going to see Stukov, the first pickup for Sky 5. And on Infernal Shrines, the, uh, the silence here can just absolutely destroy a team. So I like that pickup, and I like that it's an early pickup too. Uh, it means that they don't have a cleanse yet, but they could still, you know, we've seen a lot of teams going into the uh, Uther uh, as a double support with a kind of a front line there. On the other side, we're going to see Sylvanas and Anduin. All right. Okay, so this is getting interesting. So that could be a taunt variant with the... Uh, Gravity Lapse, and then, of course, uh, the Lurking Arm to follow up on that. Sylvanas and Anduin's on... To okay, there we go. So that's interesting. So just a couple seconds here until this last ban. So the Diablo being banned out by Regen Retro. So I kind of... I kind of expect we still need a little bit of a like some wave clear. Sylvanas can do it pretty well um, still, so I, it wouldn't necessarily be out there. We also need a solo lane, so they've kind of targeted with the Malthale the solo lane, so it wouldn't surprise me to see something uh, solo lane focused here, even like a, a blazer. Oh, the Garrosh that I mentioned at the beginning, of course. There we go. All right, so they need their solo, they need their tank, and they need some more damage to go along with the Sylvanas. So they need some follow-up. They do have the root coming out from Anduin as well, so Chastise can do value. Well, there's that uh, additional follow-up, the Malganus uh, stuns as well as sleeps, and the Hanzo with that uh, Dragon Arrow could certainly set up a solid play for this team. Also get some Shrine Clear. The other thing that Hanzo does have is the potential for a a Dragon Strike on the uh, on the point, and that can actually do quite a bit in these kind of narrow sections of uh, of the map. But we're gonna see a Tracer and a Sonya pick up here. So Tracer, um, I, I've seen Apple Mike's Tracer, and and it's scary. So I, I like the, <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> well, fair enough. All right. Okay. Well, there's, there's your shrine clear, right? That is, that, I, I don't even know what to say about this. Let's see, Varian Sukup, Kale, Tracer, Sonya. All right, well, I got all the right heroes. Hopefully they didn't switch around too much, but oh my goodness, we got a murky. Well, ladies and gentlemen, take a look at your drafts. Going into game number one on Infernal Shrines. Between Sky 5 and Regen Retro.
Get that music turned off. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Infernal Shrines, this Diablo map here. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Since the game put us on this side, we'll get started with Regen Retro. On the red side, we have Deltron playing the Anduin. Masama is on that murky. Aaron is on uh, Sylvanas Sultanian on Malganus, and Big Bird playing that Hanzo. And coming up for Sky 5, Quan Finnegan on Sonya. Goliath on Varian, Apple Mike playing the Tracer, Furl coming in on the Kale Thos, and Alan by default on the Stukov. So we see Murky heading toward the middle by himself. That's going to give uh, the rest of Regen Retro a moment up in the top lane. But we already see some split off here from a Apple Mike, getting an idea that maybe this is what they're doing. But Apple Mike by himself is not going to get. A whole lot of damage in on this. Not going to be enough to uh, at least stop the potential for them to take this down. We do have the rotation up by Sky 5 now. So not quite able to get it, or do they? One more attack. They do get it. So And it looks like everybody's able to make it out with Altanian getting that sleep out. And the Chastise coming in, slowing down that Sonya. So I'd be interested to see if they're going to try to push a, uh, like a death ball with the four people in the top lane leaving the Murky to go by himself with that uh, fishy deal and making use of the bribes on the rotation. And at least right now, that seems to be the case. Um, and I don't know that Sonya will be able to keep up with that very well, so we'll see. But once again, shutting down the towers here, Goliath coming in with the charge, and we are seeing Ultanian sleep the uh, Tracer. And so every time they've got that Black Arrows, we can expect to see them push in onto the structure and try to get additional damage. But in the meantime, while this 4v3 is going on up top, we've got Sonya picking up the siege camp in the bot lane, or in the mid lane rather. Kael'thas doing what he can to double soak, and of course working on that mana addict. And Murky picking up those bribe stacks. So soon enough he's going to come in, probably go to this bot camp, because especially with Sonya going over here to the uh, the aggressive siege. Can't, ex can't uh, expect Murky to bump in on that one. Yep, he's just going to bypass that and clear up what he can here. Hanzo going to come down to help here. Sonya, I'm sorry, uh, Sylvanas getting very low there. As uh, without the Hanzo, that became an even fight. Currently, because of the the murky double push being a little bit behind here, we've got Sky 5 slightly ahead in the overall XP. All right, so Tracer versus uh, Malganus. I don't think that's one that Malganus gets a lot of value out of. But instead, we're going to see the taunt onto Sonya. The silence going out. Good sleep from Ultanian. And the last moment uh, flash of light, I think, is what they what his uh, heal is there onto Aaron. Deltron coming in with the, the big play there to keep Sylvanas alive. <laughs> Welcome, Recyclic. Cheering on the... the I guess I can't really say the home team, the uh, the away team anyways. But to Recyclic, it's always the home team. So we're going to have Varian and uh, Stukov with that Pimp Hand Strong over here on the Shaman Camp. But we're also going to see the Sylvanas and Malganus. I wonder if there are any other Is names out there. Sylvanas, Malganus, Kael'thas Is, kind of close. Shaman, or the... Um, yeah, Shaman Camps. Picked up by both teams here, and we are seeing the rotation down. Looks like Murky might not join. It looks like maybe Murky's going to go up and uh, continue his fishy deal stacks. So 15 to 7 on the Shrine so far here. So uh, pretty pretty good balance there, considering how long uh, it took Retro to get here. But the taunt going out onto Sylvanas, the silence, and the kill. It looks like Altanian's in danger now as well and is going to go down just at the gate. Not quite close enough to the Anduin to get another heal. So this is looking like it's going to be a Punisher, a Mortar Punisher, going over to the side of Sky 5. And Murky's able to clear up in the top lane here, clear up the Shaman Camp, and is going to get some value, especially with these towers already, one of them already down and one of them very low here. Uh, all right. That's what I get for uh, highlighting the top lane. 
See, and this is why solo laners don't get covered, because when we go to look at your stuff, <laughs> more exciting things happen. Not always, but sometimes. But Punisher takes down the wall, so they do get uh, that value there, equalizing what is going on in the top lane, although that is getting about half already here. Big taunt going out, and Malganus is going to get taken out. And that's going to give them the first four to the game. Sky 5 here, with Murky picking up that uh, siege camp here. Not sure if he used any bribe stacks. We can probably check on that. Uh, yeah, he probably did. All right, so the Punisher is down. Got a full fort, but up in the top lane, that's Shaman Camp did not do too badly. So if you're gonna lose a uh, a fort, getting your camp and and ultimately losing the Murky because of it uh, is is actually not a not an unreasonable trade. And really, I think that ultimately, you know, Retro's kind of playing for the level 10 game here. They, they need these ultimates um, to get value, but the damage going out onto Ultanian, even with that uh, Leap of Faith, the Pulse Bomb, of course, remaining. And you know what? While I'm talking about Pulse Bombs, let me tell you about my BlizzCon experience when Overwatch first came out. I don't play a lot of first-person shooters, and I, I was like, hey, this Tracer character, she seems cool. Let me play some Tracer. And I charged up my Pulse Bomb, and I was like, hey, guys. What does this Pulse Bomb do? And sure enough, I was in the arcade and threw it on one of the game machines. And would you believe that it blew up in my face? I bet you would. And it did. And I died. And I felt like an idiot. But anyways, that's not what this Tracer is doing. This Tracer is uh, much more adept at playing Tracer in Heroes of the Storm than I was in Overwatch. But we do have some ultimates here, and we're going to see the rotation right onto the Sonya. That's going to get Retro a little bit of a boost here. Make this at least a somewhat even fight, although the taunt... Oh my goodness, the potential for blow up and the silence just going crazy here. Getting this, and they're heavily focusing on this Sylvanas. Savannah's taking the Shadow Daggers at uh, level 1 there. Um, sitting at 21 stacks currently. But these ultimates, as I mentioned earlier here, we do have the parry, uh, shield wall rather, for Varian. The flailing swipe for Stukov, which did get a, a bit of a boost there, a reduced cooldown. Uh, we've got the Phoenix, the Leap, and then what is the Quantum Spike? Yeah, the, the extra percent damage. So I'm kind of interested to see them hanging out here. It looks like they're watching for this rotation, but again, I mean, Retro's been pretty much interested in this top lane. So I don't see them likely to rotate down, which they're not, uh, but that's potentially a problem here as uh, once again, the Malganus this time getting taunted with the Silence. That Silence just doing work along with the taunt. And pretty much exactly the combo I mentioned in the draft, right? The taunt into the uh, the gravity lapse and the silence, and then you have just a dead hero because of the rest of the damage coming out. And this time it's going to be Anduin, and it's every single time, every single time, Varian charges, gets the taunt, silence goes down, there's nothing any of these heroes can do about it. And uh, Murky's going to come over here, pop off that fishy deal, steal this shaman camp as Sky 5 does the same to his camp. And now he's trying to trying to get away. He's not going to provide too much XP when they catch him. But he'll, he'll provide a little bit. More importantly, though, is he's going to provide a little bit of extra damage to Tracer here as she's now getting an additional 18% damage to her basic attacks. And Tracer does a lot of damage to begin with, so they're going to have to look for a way to get rid of this uh, Tracer at some point here. But there's the Light Bomb coming out and uh, Wailing Arrow getting the Silence. Uh, what is that? Carrion Swarm here, getting some damage out. Furl in danger. Do they get the kill? They do, but it costs them a Hanzo as well. Trying to catch up to Ultanian as Ultanian using that uh, Fell Claws to get out a dodge. So a one-for-one one trade, but almost a two-for-one. And s certainly the uh, Shrine Minions right now pretty equal, but with Ultanian being so low, I mean, Quan Finnegan could... Not Quan Finnegan, as I was going to say, uh, Apple Mike, rather, could just finish off even the uh, the Malganish when he's that low. Getting a, the charge up onto his Pulse Bomb, he's very close to that 100% mark. Could throw out a Pulse Bomb and suddenly... There's no Malganus. So here comes the Arcane Punisher in the mid lane. There is no wall. 
There is a tower, but it's quickly going down here. The leap onto Malganus, and he's getting a fair bit of damage. There is a pulse bomb available now for Tracer, and Tracer has been landing almost every pulse bomb here. There was there was one early in the game that missed, but uh, ultimately I, I don't think that they even needed it here. And this is what they're looking for. They got the pull, they've got the stun, or the taunt rather, the Leap of Faith pulled him out, but it was just too much damage. There's so much burst coming out from the side of Sky 5 that even pulling somebody out of the the, uh, the garbage cannot save them. Let's take a look at these talents here again as uh, level 13 available. So for ultimates here, I already mentioned some of these. We did get the Octo Grab for Murky there. Uh, the Light Bomb... For Anduin, Wailing Arrow for Sylvanas, uh, Dragon Arrow, and then the Carrion Swarm for Hanzo and Malganus. So map pressure being picked up here by Sky 5, getting that pressure in the bot lane and in the mid lane. And the next Punisher is going to go to the bot lane. So, you know, the, the Punisher rotation is not, it's not like Volskaya where it's fixed. It's also not like, um, well, here we go. There's another taunt, this time onto Hanzo. There is the light bomb, but it's not going to go off. They're killing these heroes in a matter of two, two to three seconds, but they did get the kill onto the tracer, and that is phenomenal for them as it resets those uh, untouchable stacks. Even the murky um, octo grab, not enough of a lockdown to help get the kill. And here we're going to see the taunt once again onto the Malganus. He does get the Carrion Swarm, so he's going to be able to make it out alive. I had a point. But then I got distracted because things were happening. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Infernal Shrines. So the, uh, the, the Shrines themselves, they don't go like mid and then bottom and then top or anything like that. It's... They pop up they will never repeat the same one so it won't go bottom and then bottom again but once it's done bottom it can go either mid or top and then if it goes mid after that it could go either top or bottom which is exactly what we've seen here it went bottom mid bottom so it's it's not a rotation where it has to go through the full set top middle bottom so that's unfortunate for retro because top is the one lane that they've actually had you know pretty decent structure damage here and they don't even have a uh, a Punisher coming up for them to go there. It also happens to be the one lane where they have a tower, uh, a fort rather. So easier for them to defend as well. But with both of these Shaman camps getting picked up, the other aspect here is, is that neither team now is going to have uh, any outside pressure onto their forts. I almost wouldn't be surprised to see Retro just push in and take this fort down now so that they can get some catapult pressure while the uh, camp, while the shrine's going on, and that's exactly what they're going to do. They've got the Sylvanas. They've got an absolutely massive wave here, and that's going to give Sky 5 the time to get onto the point here. Now, they don't have black arrows, but they do have a pretty significant wave, so they're going to keep going. They're going to get onto this uh, fort wall. And we see the rotation from Varian and Kael'thas, now Tracer as well, and Stukov. So they pull off everybody but the Sonya. But Sonya can clear that. Sonya can clear the shrines very easily. And will do so. Sitting at 35 already. Murky coming in to steal all of two. But there's not really anything else for Regen Retro to do right now other than to defend this Punisher. So it looks like they're going to set up a gank here. They want to try to get uh, a kill onto somebody when the Punisher goes by. Looks like Murky is the bait, but who are they going after? What are they looking for here, guys? 16's available. I'll pop those up here while we're waiting on this. I think that they're being too patient. This is a little bit different than the Immortal because the Immortal keeps going. The Punisher will leap on them, so they had to wait for that. Um, they do get the Light Bomb out, but it's going to be Anduin just getting obliterated there. And the Flailing Swipe going out. Carrion Swarm getting damage onto multiple heroes, but Ultania is by himself. The rest of the team had to, had to make a, a break for it. 
And with those two kills, soon to be three. Oh my god. All right, so, and now with Murky's Egg being taken out here, a half health Punisher, this is looking more and more like it's going to be a core call. And they're making their way. Should be game number one going over to Sky 5 in just under 15 minutes on Infernal Shrines. All right, let's take a look at these stats. Seventeen kills to three. Yeah, and and you know what? Those kills reflect like some games. You feel like you just don't. It doesn't feel like it. It was you know seventeen kills to three. This game really kind of felt like a seventeen kills to three. Um, you know, Sky Five played a, a, an A plus game. Really pushed hard um, throughout the entirety of the game. Uh, you know, other than the very early uh, push onto the top wall there, they had most of the control of the map. Um, and I just don't know that there was anything that Retro could do about it. Uh, the potential for damage between the Kael'thas and Tracer, just too high. Absolutely too high with the uh, taunt uh, follow-up by the Gravity Lapse and the, uh, the Silence. Because even... I mean, what's Malganus going to do? He doesn't get any healing unless he actually does damage. Self-healing, anyways. What is Sylvanas going to do? She can't hunting a wave away because she's silenced. And those are the two primary targets. So I expect to see some, some changes in the draft here uh, from Regen Retro as they've got to find a way to, to deal with this heavy burst blow up so maybe they go into that that uther double support that i mentioned earlier uh i don't know if that's something that they run but it seems to be a a, a more common theme in ngs they could even look at something with the tracer or, i'm sorry the uh tassadar as tassadar since his rework has really made quite a quite an impression lately Well, what do you guys think? What's a good way for them to deal with this uh, blow-up comp that Sky5 had put together? I don't expect them to do exactly the same thing. Of course, it'll be something map-specific, but uh, I think I think the Stukov becomes a ban. Because I think that, in theory, you could potentially survive the, uh, the variant taunt. Well, that's not good. Uh, let's turn off the Discord channel there. There we go. Now it's just alpha. So yeah, I think they could deal with the variant taunt, but the uh, the Stukov silence with as the follow up, I think, is just too much for them. Um, and I don't think that there are a lot of heroes. I mean, even the most of the tanks, you know, that have the higher hit point pools. I mean, if you have a Diablo there, um, Diablo still probably dies. You know, the uh, Johanna, the who else? A Nubarak would just get roasted there because Nubarak's got a lower health pool, anyways. But you know what? Let's uh, you know what we do have. Let's see if I've got it set up properly here. Oh, we take a look at the bracket. There we go. So as we can see here, Sky Five and Regen Retro down there at the uh, at the bottom right now. I forgot to give them their point. Let me give them their point. There we go. So far, we've got one for Sky 5. And I think that I can... Oh, no, I can't. I don't think I can actually adjust the names in the brackets. Nope, sure can't. So anyways, so as we can see, Sky 5 and Regen Retro here in the lower half of the bracket. Uh, this is number 3 and number 16. Gilly Shark and Wholesome Halfwits, the number 2 and 7, uh, will be the next opponent. There we go. Now, the game, there is another Div A game going on tonight. And that is uh, Gilly Shark versus Wholesome Halfwits. So we'll have to check in, and that is not being cast. Um, but we'll have to check in and see if we can find out what happens with that by the end of this match. So we can determine who they're going to be playing against. All right, looks like we are going to Tomb of the Spider Queen. This was the selection of... Regen Retro. 
uh, retro. Looks like regen retro content with uh, taking map pick while uh, Sky 5 interested in the first pick. So, but let's take again a another look at these maps here. So, again, Sky 5 originally banning out Dragonshire and Sky Temple. Regen Retro with the bans on Decursed Hollow and Towers of Doom. Our first map was there on Infernal Shrines. That was picked by Regen Retro and was uh, the victory went over to Sky 5. This next game going to be on Tomb of the Spider Queen. And that is a Regen Retro pick. But let's get right into this draft here. So we saw in the first half of this draft... Malthale Gul'dan. And then the third ban was Garrosh. It would not surprise me to see a, a higher priority on the Garrosh, because pretty sure Retro likes to play Garrosh here. I'm also kind of surprised we didn't see a Medivh ban. Or a, or a play of Medivh there. But we'll see. Any of those heroes could still provide a lot of value here, so they are going to stick with that Malthale ban. What are we? Tomb this back. Okay. So Regen Retro had originally been banning out the Johanna, Rhaegar, and Diablo. And I got to tell you, uh, you know, all things that Rhaegar can do, I don't know that any of it is more devastating than what... Uh, that Stukov can do. We're going to see the Johanna ban first, again. And Johanna did get a, a, a bit of a buff adjustment, I suppose, with her reinforced talent at level 1 there, allowing for 60, I think, physical armor for the first 2, 2.5 seconds or so. After using any ability, it basically turns into a version of ETC. And we are going to see them stick with the gold Anban. So, uh, it, I would, I would be amazed if we don't see them uh, regen retro pick up the Garrosh, unless Sky Five picks it up. Welcome, Murda. Another of the regen fam cheering on the away team. And there's the Stukov ban. So I like the Stukov ban. I, I think that while the variants set up the plays, I think that the Stukov was definitely the linchpin in that. And without the Stukov, I, I think they at least have a better chance. They have the capability to get out of things uh, better. So last time we saw the Stukov picked up first. This time it is going to be the Rhaegar. So high priority onto their support character, their uh, healer character. But this time it's actually going to be Apple Mike showing Rhaegar instead of the Tracer. So I wonder if this goes into a double support. All right, so show me Garrosh Mediv. That is not Garage Medivh, but okay. <laughs> so Sylvanas coming out again, but this time on Masama, and then Deltron picking up the Ariel. So I think that I think Sylvanas is a, a decent battery for Ariel, and then of course she did just have adjustments, so she does do more of her own energy generation. Um, but I wonder if that's actually the the uh, the battery that they're going for. There's no Gul'dan. Some of the other batteries that we see regularly are the um, Lunara or the Vala. They did ban out Johanna, so... And it is the double sword. Double support. Coming in with the Anduin, so... And Kael'thas... Hmm... So they made pretty solid use of that Kael'thas in the last game. The ETC ban, definitely helpful. Because uh, Kael'thas with that would just cause problems. Living Bomb gets uh, 
so much value when you've got a, a whole group of people caught up in a mosh pit. Last band coming out from Sky 5. It's going to be the Hanzo. All right, so we're going to see... I mean, they ran the murky last game. I don't think that they're going to run murky here. The, the lanes are real short, so it's very easy to get between them and, and cause problems for the murky. So they're going to see Diablo and Orphea. So we could see a detainment strike with Crushing Jaws. I think Crushing Jaws is the way to go, based on what they have now. We'll see if that changes. But we're going to go back into that variant along with the Phoenix. I think I remember seeing uh, some Quan Finnegan Phoenix, actually. Um, and that's, that's a little bit of a scary prospect. So they still have the, uh, the taunt with the gravity laps. They also have the root from Anduin. There's no cleanse on the side of regen retro, but they do have the crystal ages. And we're going to see a Chen. All right. Hmm. So yeah, so I'm thinking Sylvanas is the battery here. What do we have? Yeah, there's a lot of ways to interrupt Salvation. So it's not going to be Salvation. It's going to be the Light Bomb again. Other team going in with the Varian. So they have the... Oh, God. Varian charging in, has the Light Bomb, uses the Taunt, gets the Light Bomb stun, has the Kael'thas stun, has the Root follow-up, has the uh, potential even for Earthbind Totem. And the Totem interacts with the purification salvo i think that's well variant also has a slow so there there are numerous ways to get the purification salvo i don't think they go uh meme beam here but we'll see all right regen retro looking to keep their playoff hopes alive coming in 1-0 right now in favor of Sky 5. Let's give our introduction here to Regen Retro. Masama playing Sylvanas. Aaron playing the Chen. Deltron going to be on the Angel of Hope. Ariel. Big Bird on the Orphea. And Altanian on the Lord of Terror Diablo. And for Sky 5, looking to close this out in a quick 2-0, we've got Quan Finnegan on the Phoenix. Apple Mike on the... Rhaegar, I knew that. Uh, Alan by default gonna be playing the um anduin goliathon varian and furl once again on the kale thos let's take a look at these talents here as the team's heading on in working on their initial i guess punching people in the face the only real talent that has any stacks right now for players is the advanced targeting for phoenix at level one uh, we do have that mana addict as well for globes So we'll see how that plays out here. Is Diablo coming in into the back? Diablo doesn't have a whole lot of health, but neither does Varian. He gets flipped over, and the pull from uh, Alan by default is going to get uh, the... Well, it's not going to get... Pulls him out, but he doesn't survive. So that's going to get the kill on to Varian. I was saying the Leap of Faith. That's where I was going with that, was Leap of Faith got the kill. But Orphe is actually the one with the hat here. And we're going to see the rotation down between Chen and Phoenix here in the bot lane. Kael'thas just coming down to catch the globe, I believe, is what the goal was there. 21 souls for Diablo. Good, uh, you know, good quick burst there at the beginning to get some extra souls from the early kill. And this is, you know, this is a little bit more aggression here with these, these heroes that we've got now uh, from Regen Retro. 
But keep in mind, I mean, especially with this Rhaegar here, they're going to be aggressive on the side of Sky 5 too. But right now, that's another kill onto the Rhaegar. Almost another kill even onto the Kael'thas. Big Bird going in hard with uh, that Orphea, throwing out that Chaos. Let's check in on our solo lane in the bot lane here. Currently... Looks like uh, slightly in favor, maybe, of Chen. As the, um, the wave is mounting up here. But, back to the action. Kael'thas throwing out living bombs like it's his job or something. And Ultanian doing a good job of interrupting the rotations. The flip and the charge onto Varian after that detainment strike from Deltron. So Varian getting a lot of damage there, but again, double support, so he's going to get healed up pretty quickly, pretty efficiently. And moving on to the minions. Level 4 is now available here. We've got that Detainment Strike quest for Oriel. What is that called? Repeated Offense. Trying to smash people into walls, and Varian is going to take the taunt, as expected. Sitting at 9 globes so far for the Kael'thas. Speaking of Kael'thas, getting charged into that wall. Gravity Lap's coming out, getting all three of Regen Retro. And now Diablo, finding himself in between a couple of blue health bars, is going to get that flip. But right now, there's nothing to charge Goliath into. So he will make his way away. And down here in the bot lane now, Phoenix pulling ahead a little bit in the value here. Aaron, a little bit lower. Because he doesn't have that same shield that... Uh, the Phoenix has that just auto regenerates, but he does get that kick out there. Forcing Phoenix to run away. Uh, let's see, looks so far here, Regen Retro now available to turn in their gems and get a, a Web Weaver. Almost kicking Goliath into that wall, but not quite able to get that stack. We're going to see, instead of turning in or attempting to turn in, we're going to rotate into the mid lane here. And uh, Aaron pulling off the Phoenix shield there on Quan Finnegan, so Quan Finnegan's going to work to regenerate those shields. 29 out of 50 gems so far for Regen Retro. 19 out of 50 for Sky 5. And Altanian now looking to try to turn his in. That'll get them close, but not quite enough. They're going to need Chen's ultimately to turn in. Two additional. I guess not. Masama's got enough as well here, so... Let's see, where are the rest of the gems on the other side here? That's six? Six, there we go. So we've got 14 on Varian still. And uh, there we go. So the red web weaver's coming on. And both teams almost exactly the same time get level seven. So let's pop those up and check them out here. So presumably we'll see the push up into the top lane, but the taunt goes out onto the Orphea. Not a ton of damage, but they do get the Detainment Strike to push the Rhaegar away and keep Orphea alive. If anybody else, any kind of damage character was nearby, that would have been a kill onto Orphea. But for her, she's thankful to get out of dodge and using that, uh, I don't know, whatever that dancing away thing is on point. Actually, I think that's a talent, but whatevs. So the push into the top lane, we've got 4v4 here, the wall going down, one tower as well, Goliath looking for somebody to taunt. He does get flipped and pushed back, but is able to charge onto the Web Weaver to get out of the immediate danger. And it looks like, yeah, I was going to say, it looks like Retro's trying to finish off that second tower. So Sylvanas coming down into the mid lane here to finish off the, the wall and towers in the mid lane. We'll check on bot lane in just a moment here as that uh, web weaver's already down. And Chen is with the group here in the mid lane. So how far do we get here in the bot lane? Wall and one tower. So basically all of the front line down across the board here for Sky 5. They're making their way down onto this Chen. The gravity lap's going out. I don't think Chen survives this. And that's uh, about 15 gems that just got lost. And that should give... Yeah. Sky 5, the opportunity to get a turn in here. Kael'thas doesn't have any gems, really, so he's going to zone out for the team. Not sure. Does it show? Nah, I just carried. So we have no idea how many uh, regen retros turned in. I think they turned in a few, but I don't... It wasn't very many. Like, maybe even single digits. 
All right, so we're going to see all five of Sky 5 pulling up into the top lane, although maybe Kael'thas is going elsewhere? Nope, he's coming back. They want to get the equalized pressure here. They're getting close to level 10s. And these towers hold the XP to get them there. Chen in the bot lane trying to get level 10s for regen retro. And the flip onto the Varian there over the wall. The taunt coming out, though, onto Diablo. And uh, Living Bomb not quite getting spread. But that is going to be the healing well going down. So the first casualty of this fight. And the charge in onto the Phoenix. The flip not quite able to get the kill, but they do get the... Uh, the taunt onto Deltron, and Deltron's gonna go down. Ariel, the Angel of Hope. Well, she doesn't have any hope right now. Ultania's in a lot of danger, and there's the Eternal Feast. Kind of surprised that we see that there. But uh, Purification Salvo coming out, getting the damage onto those low health backline squishies. But without the slow to empower, it didn't quite get as much damage as uh, as he was probably looking for. The taunt goes out on Chen. There's the gravity lapse. And once again, we're seeing just boatloads of damage here. Aaron trying to make it out with the stagger. But ultimately, once that expired, he saw his health just melt away. Oh, are we drinking now? Fair enough. With that kill, the aggressive camp invade coming out from Sky 5. We do get the extra charge or stack, I guess, onto the Taman Strike here. But that big taunt, again, it doesn't matter who it is. If you get taunted and you have the follow-up to the Gravity Lapse and uh, the rest of the CC chain here, you're going to die. So Regen Retro clearing out the mid camp as Sky5 making their way up to the boss. And I think they have enough damage to really burn this down before Regen Retro can make a fight of it. Yeah, I mean, Goliath has been on point with the taunts, but so has the rest of the team. They've been really putting out the pressure and making sure that that CC chain is just perfect. We've got all of Regen Retro here now, onto the point. Eternal Feast not quite on the point, so it's gonna get uh, removed. Salvation goes out, and uh, Big Bird dying there on the Orphea. Phoenix having to get out of there, though. Altanian trying to survive, but just so much damage. And that's gonna be a three for one, as they do get the kill onto the Phoenix, but now Sylvanas with no Haunting Wave has to get out of here. And does not quite make it. The taunt and loss of 20 gems. Level 13 is available now for Sky 5. And uh, they do have enough for a turn in. So they're all going to they're gonna leave the boss here. Get the turn in. Which um, I like that. Because Sylvanas, Sylvanas is still down. This gives them a free turn in. That top lane is pushed up heavily. So they can start working on these other lanes. The bot lane will get cleared up by the, uh, the web weaver for sure. This is a little bit of a safer play for them. It allows them to uh, clear up the lanes, get this XP, push out the mid fort, keep the pressure going, and uh, and keep Retro busy for a good 30 to 60 seconds dealing with that boss. And now they're going to have to deal with the Web Weaver coming in in the top lane and the mid lane so that they don't lose a, a keep here. <laughs> the feeds from Murda, yeah. All right, so both top and mid web weavers just about to go down. We're going to see the rotation into mid. So never mind. They were just just making sure that nobody was there. Just kidding. And now with this wall going down, it opens up the potential for a big taunt combo. The Phoenix going out. I don't think it's quite in range of the... Uh, fort, so it's just gonna get the damage onto the well there. Here comes an Eternal Feast, but there's again, there's nothing really to lock it down, which is the reason why I didn't didn't think that was ultimately gonna be the heroic that was selected. Because um, unless you somehow manage to get an APOC, but even the APOC doesn't have enough to set it up. You know, you're getting a maybe a one-person APOC there. Um, I think the I just think the Crushing Jaws was the better way to go. I don't know. So they don't have any idea where let's actually 
what is it b yeah so no idea here for regen retro they have no idea where the uh sky five are but i assume they're at their camp yeah they they're on their way and now they're going they have a they have a good idea that this is where they were going after that uh camp so here comes that apoc this is where we want to see that eternal feast uh, but not coming out yet. They are on the point. Salvation coming out. So saving them the damage and uh, keeping the 25% uh, the healing as well. Ultanian getting a 40% reduction in healing here. And they're they're going all in on this, fort, or on this uh, camp here. This is basically going to be game. Well, I was going to say game for uh, retro if they lose this. I think that was a little bit heavy trying to go in there. Level 16 is now available for Sky 5. Um, they're going to rotate down here to the bot because there's a siege camp. And also, they may catch this Sylvanas. I don't know that she's going to be able to get away here, especially since there's probably going to be a totem coming out. Well, he doesn't even... Oh, the totem went down behind. So this is a keep right here. And it, it was a long run, so maybe this isn't quite game just yet, but it is a whole lot of structure damage. They're going to get this well in the middle. There's a bruiser camp in the middle as well, so they can make use of that to, uh, along with this second one here, to very likely get another keep. Yeah, and the you know the other thing is the crushing jaws would have set up a really good apoc too, I think. Because then you can you can get a couple of people in the APOC with that. So, but uh, there goes the Eternal Feast, getting some damage out. The uh, Crystal Aegis going out onto Orphea, trying to get away, does get the dance back there. Uh, trying just to stay alive now. They do get the kill onto Rhaegar, but they trade out the Chen. So this keep is safe now. And I'm... Uh, uh, you know, talking about things that I'm surprised by, I'm a little bit surprised by the Salvation just because of the fact that Diablo has two different, well, really three in a way, uh, three different ways to interrupt it. Um, the Wailing Arrow as well, the Detainment Strike. There's a lot of ways that they could interrupt it. But so far, I don't think we've seen one. I think they've all been, uh, the Salvations have been absolutely perfect they've provided a uh, huge value both on the boss and on the bruiser camp looks like boss coming up in three seconds i don't know if retro is mindful of the timing of this looks like maybe although big bird's still in the bot lane here so that's i mean it's not good if they don't have the uh the orphea so they're gonna have to defend defend this down 16s at their keep they don't have enough gems for turn in so no defense coming from the spiders so this is uh this is the last stand i think if if regen retro doesn't get some kills out of this they lose their keep and if they lose any of their own people they probably lose the game so they have to be really mindful of this defense and even if they have to give up the keep and, and defend at the core, so be it. But, you know, they've got to find some value here. Almost to 16. Aaron trying to stay close enough to get those uh, the, the, the XP out of this. I expect to see Storm Earth and Fire coming out as the APOC and Eternal Feast going out. Varian getting the uh, Leap of Faith out. But here comes that protect again, and there's the Wailing Arrow. Big silence, but Ultanian taking so much damage could end up going down, and the taunt is huge. With Phoenix securing the kill, the boss is still going on the core. It just now died, but there's no shielding. Ultanian is back on the Diablo here. Quan Finnegan tried to finish off Eren. And there's the charge. Can they get the kill onto the Phoenix? No, not just yet. But Chen is back on the table. He's got about half health, so he's, he's just fine. A little bit more damage here onto the core as a couple of catapults have made their way in the bot lane. And all the way down to 55%. And I have to say that that was uh, probably the the best that, that Retro could have hoped for there. Was to, uh, to survive the game, ultimately. Um, they did lose the Diablo Souls. Let's check in. How's he doing? 23, so, you know, 
at this point 20 is just around the corner they want to find a fight now and they might find it here onto the phoenix the charge the flip and another charge phoenix is not going to go down the the warp able to get him out of danger but ultanian not in such a good place with the low health uh from the reduced souls and now big bird as well going to fall and Rhaegar chasing after the chen and the oriole both i think go down they do chen going down and oriole being chased down by the phoenix and anduin jen's dropping all over the place and with the taunt and Rhaegar damage. How does that even happen? How is that so much damage coming out from the Rhaegar and the Varian Taunt? I don't understand. But that's going to be game number two going over to Sky 5 as they make their way to the core. And sending Regen Retro on to Season 8. All right, let's take a look at these stats here and uh, hop over to one of our NGS lobbies so that we can get a quick interview. Uh, let's see. So we did see level 20s picked up there at the end, at just right at the very end there by Sky5. We'll show those 22 to 4, uh, you know, even more kills here coming out from Sky 5, although, you know, that full team wipe at the end, of course, contributing pretty significantly there. Yeah, the, the 4 level advantage was, uh, was pretty significant there at the end. And maybe if they... Maybe if they didn't have, maybe if it was equal at that point when uh, Diablo's charging in onto the Phoenix, maybe that Phoenix dies. But, you know, they did such a good job with that double support keeping even the, the low health, you know, Phoenix alive. There were so many times the Phoenix had, you know, 100 health or so. Good evening. Welcome, Apple Mike. Is it, uh, is it just you joining or is anybody else from the team joining? I, I didn't know more than one was invited. I'm sure they'd love to join. Uh, you know what? If they want to stop by, you know, we can have however many people want to stop by. I don't mind. So you can let them know. We can we can uh, chat for a moment as they come in. But uh, congratulations on your 2-0 victory going into the quarterfinals against Regen Retro. That's uh, got to feel good, right? Oh, fantastic. Um, that was uh, that was the team that we lost against. So it was good to have that, that comeback victory. Oh, see, I didn't even know that. I didn't have enough time to look into your guys' uh, history. So that, oh, man, that that makes it even better for you. And they beat us on that map, too. Did they? Oh, my goodness. Well, well done. Yeah. You guys You guys played both of these games really well. The first game was 17-3. to 3. The second game was 22-4. to 4. Um, You know, you coordinated against the uh, the Murky in game one really well. And uh, and I do have to say, like the the tracer play, th this isn't the only game I've seen you play your tracer in. In fact, I don't think it's the only game I've seen you play the Rhaegar in either. Um, and you've been very aggressive. Uh, you don't see the untouchable stacks very often, uh, but you know you have absolutely no fear about that. No, I, it's one of those you know win lose situations. As long as you keep them, it's good. As soon as you lose them, you're garbage. So uh, luckily, I only lost him when we were three levels down, so it wasn't too crushing for us. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I think welcome he means up. <laughs> yeah, welcome everybody else. <laughs> Looks like we got the full team in here from Sky5, so welcome everybody. Uh, Heck yeah. So yeah, so congratulations. I already said this to Apple Mike, but you know, congratulations to you guys. You know, we were just talking about how uh, Apple Mike had brought up that you guys had um, actually lost to Regen Retro in the regular season. So you know, this is a big win for you guys going into the uh, into the playoffs. Um, and you know, your next opponents now are either going to be Wholesome Halfwits or uh, Gilly Shark. And uh, so. I think one of those is a little bit more of a, a an expected challenge than the other, probably for you guys, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't go. know. Wholesome Halfwits is, might have been the toughest team we've ever played. Well, there you go. So, so game number one on Infernal Shrines, like, did when you guys had your uh, your uh, draft picked up, 
you know, seeing the Varian and the Kael'thas and the Stukov at the beginning, like it to me, it was obvious that you guys were going with the taunt, you know, combo. Um, and anything else was just like gravy. And that that's exactly how it played out. You guys killed people in under like two seconds. Like the the gravity lapse wouldn't even barely wear off before people yeah, so were getting I was, done. I was really surprised they didn't go Medivh there. Um, they they play Medivh a lot, and I feel like it would have been a a pretty good. Easy, I mean, his his win rate's not the best, but uh, I was I was pretty surprised by that. Yeah, that would have been a, a pretty helpful pickup um, into that. Now that now that you mentioned, I was asking at the end of game one. I was like, what do they do to to bounce back from this? What do they change? Oh yeah, Medivh. Yeah, that would have been great. And I, I even I mentioned it. We weren't really that afraid of it because, I don't know, when we played him before, he wasn't that strong with it, but it still would have been something. <laughs> like, kind of like the Ages was the second game. Right, right. Yep. Well, and you guys uh, had instead banned out the Malthale, the Gul'dan, and the, the Garrosh. Um, I know that the Garrosh is something they played a lot with the Mediv uh, earlier in the season, so... Um, you know, Garrosh would have been uh, a little bit of a challenge for you guys to have to deal with it with that comp. So, was that it? Was there uh, anything specific about the Garrosh other than just hey, that puts you know Varian into a, a a bad place, or was that just because of the fact that they uh, a comfort tank for them? Why not both? Yeah, it was the it was Garrosh was also one of the reasons we went with Anduin. Yeah. Um, yeah, I personally on Varian was like, well, it got Ariel already, and I really don't want it to get worse with the Garrosh. So I begged and I pleaded and I cried and I threw a big hissy fit until somebody decided to ban Garrosh. <laughs> and it happened, and it was good for us. <laughs> well, there you go. That makes, you know what? That makes a whole lot of sense. I can I can get behind that. Yeah. yeah so, so Goliath hasn't been too confident on, on Varian, so he's... He's like, don't, don't make me go against Garrosh. And you know what? That's fair. Uh, you know, there are certainly heroes that, you know, we play that uh, maybe are the best fit for what you're trying to go for, but you certainly are a little bit less confident. My Mine, personally, is, uh, is Arthas. And every time that we play Arthas, like, we win. And I, every after every game, I'm like, that was absolutely a terrible experience. Don't don't ever make me do that again, right? <laughs> so so Goliath, I'm with you on that. Like like oh, I get that you, hesitation. You. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But you played it really well. Like it, you know, even in chat, it was uh, Russ D Nails. Um, you know, was uh, talking about. Uh, the actually strong shocker as well was they were talking about your guys's blow up ability on this on this team um and is this you know even with the the double support like it just seemed like you guys were able to melt the other team just before they had a chance to do anything about it every time that's all mike uh it's a, it's a <laughs> Rhaegar play he doesn't play Rhaegar like a Rhaegar yeah, I'm of the opinion that Mike was raised, like, genetically raised in a lab to play Rhaegar. And it doesn't make any sense to me at all how he does it or why he does it and why it succeeds. But I, 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 that means it all the time to us. There's the key on why it succeeds. <laughs> you just hold down the Z button, and then you yeah. just bite things, and you just hold down the Z button and bite things more. <laughs> there you go. So, I, I gotta ask, so, Quan Finnegan, you, uh, you were playing Sonya in game one, you played Phoenix in game two. How many lives do you have left? Uh, like, I'm, I'm deep into the negative, and I have been for years. Because you made it out of so many, like I saw a video once of a cat that fell like nine stories. It, it lands and it just gets up like nothing happened. And I swear, that's what you looked like 80% of that game in, in game two. Mike doesn't play many assassins anymore because <laughs> we need two supports to keep quiet alive. <laughs> that makes sense that makes sense fair enough well guys uh since we've got all five of you in here um i'm gonna go ahead and kind of push off to the end uh one of the things that i do like to to ask at the end of every cast is simply uh your favorite moment of the of the match so we'll just go down the list let's start with uh quan finnegan uh, my favorite moment is like three times in a row we're like let's go to that camp because murky's about to bribe it and then it gets bribed before we're there yeah <laughs> yeah it's <was> frustrating <laughs> it yeah. literally two seconds before it happens every single time yeah 
Yeah. Yep. How about uh, Alan? Alan by default? On Tomb, on the fight, on the bottom left camp, uh, I pulled Jerry oh, by yeah. accident instead of Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was kind of weird, but we still won that fight. And it was some clutch moments there. Like, that was some good team fighting overall from both teams. It was really impressive. Yeah, those those fights over that and the, the boss up top were just absolutely brutal. Uh, Apple Mike, how about you? Uh, yeah, I think the Quan save on that camp. The I didn't think the ancestor would get him in time, so that was that was awesome. Um, and I think it turned a lot of the fight, you know, because we would have been real down some damage, and they had so much sustain. Yeah, for sure. Goliath. Um, if this is no offense to their Anduin player. Uh, it it just. It was a matter of panic, and you need to do what you need to do. But when he countered himself by using the pull on the, on the light bomb, <laughs> on the light bomb, yeah, yes. I had yep. a bit of a chuckle at that. But like I said, no, no offense meant at all. I mean, you got to do what you got to do, and he was dying either way. But it, uh, yep. it, it didn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> yep, those moments happen from time to time. You you sure. you have all the best intentions, but with the comp you guys had, as quickly as people died, the light bomb just didn't have enough time in that that uh, that they leap of faith. Yeah. Of faith. Oh yeah, it was insane. <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah, and yeah, uh, the bomb early so that way it wouldn't get dodged by the leap. Yeah, the tracer yeah. bomb. Yeah, and uh, Furl, how about you? Um, last team fight. Uh, we were 19, they were 16, so they were going to try to fight. I'm yelling at them, we're gonna, they're going to try to fight us, they're going to try to fight us. Quan runs right by a wall, <laughs> right for Diablo. I was like, and somehow we saved his ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be one of those, there was another one up in the uh, top at the top keep that uh, I was absolutely certain that Phoenix was dead. And uh, oh, yeah. and then, yeah, just warps away like like nothing. Yeah, I would have bet money he was going to die there, but we had to get another kill in exchange, and he didn't. I'm like, like, I have no idea how he didn't die. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. I'm going to give you the floor here for shoutouts. That's Mike. What? I'm usually shouting out you guys. You guys are here. Well, fine. I'll make a shoutout if nobody else is going to take the initiative. I want to shout out to my Red Deer crew, who is... Uh, watching the stream rusty nails i know is in there and a couple other people i believe are watching and uh makes me feel really good on the inside when people do that uh, i gotta i gotta shout out my wife who's uh 40 weeks and three days pregnant and oh my god we risk tonight's match <laughs> <laughs> so she's uh she's watching uh ready to get rid of a baby <laughs> wow uh, I, I just want to shout out uh, Apple Mike's wife as well for holding on so that he could play the game. It's Pearl, uh, by the way. Pearl, oh damn it! I had the wrong one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, you know. I mean, I mean, we could share. It's okay. <laughs> so, so, so Pearl's wife, and uh, you know, sorry, Apple Mike. Apparently, uh, I just gave you some bad news or good news, depending yeah. on how you feel about it. <laughs> Anybody else? All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me tonight. Really a uh, fantastic game from you guys. Uh, good luck with, you know, the rest of the playoffs here. Um, and uh, I'm going to see if I can't find out from Gilly Shark and Wholesome Halfwits uh, if they they might not actually be done yet, I guess. I don't know. Because you guys started at the same time. Awesome. I almost forgot to shout out Goliath for, like, standing up and switching roles for us. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, yeah, for sure. There you go. What uh, what was your original role, Goliath? Uh, I was our sub, and I had previously played either offlane or healer. And then one day they messaged me, and it's like, "Hey, have you ever thought about tanking?" And I said, "That sounds like the hardest thing ever." I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I did the exact same thing, Goliath. I know exactly what you just went through. We we had some team drama, and we needed a, a tank, so we're like, "Hey, man." <laughs> there you go 
Well, I tell you what, guys. Uh, it looks like um, it looks like Gilly Shark and Wholesome Halfwits are still going. There's a, a POV stream right now. All I see on that POV, POV stream is a chair that looks remarkably just like mine, actually. Um, but they are just about to get into what I assume is game number three. So I'm going to send the stream over there. Make sure you guys, uh, you can just hop onto mine and I'll, I'll rate it over there so you can check it out. Awesome, sounds, sounds good. good. Uh, All thank right, guys. you very much for the last second cast, Arrow. Yeah, for sure. Have a good night, guys. You. Catch you later. You too. See you. All right. So that is going to go ahead and wrap us up between Sky 5 and Regen Retro, the quarterfinals Division A playoff match between the number three and number six team here. And I am going to now send us over to a POV stream between Wholesome Halfwits and Gilly Shark, uh, which is the other half of these standings. Let's actually take a quick peek at those standings here um, after I update what just happened. So two and the win and that. Update that. Now we'll do the standings. And so Sky5 moving on. They'll play against the winner of Gilly Shark versus Wholesome Halfwits. And uh, we're going to send you over there in just a few moments here. So thanks, everybody, for stopping by tonight. Appreciate you stopping by for the uh, support of Heroes of the Storm and our amateur competitive league here. And I uh, hope you have a wonderful day. Crooked Smile Twitch. That's the right person. So I'm going to send you on over to Crooked Smile. I don't know who that is on the team, but there you go. I'm going to do a Patreon reminder Make sure if you're uh, if you're interested in those end of season rewards with like the player cards, or the uh, the rubber chickens, or the screaming goats. <coughs> wow, that just scared my dogs. Uh, make sure you sign up on the Patreon. Otherwise, have a great night, guys. We'll see you soon.